Hello, everyone. Hello. Hello there. Please join us. Please join in. All right. All right, can all right, we are live. We're going to give people a few minutes to come in. And thank you for everybody that's joining so far. Welcome to Candid Conversations with Coach D on today. Woo -woo. So this is a very special show on today. I'm very excited about this show. But before we get started, before we talk about what the show is going to be about, I'm going to give all of my um, participants, my panels, panelists on today, I'm going to give us a chance to go to Facebook and to share this with people. And if you're already on, please share it right now. Share it, share it, share. Let's share. Let's do it. All right. <clears throat> I might want to all right so please go and share with everybody thank you thank you thank you for everybody that's joining so far all right let's see here Come on in and share. We are on Thursday. Today is Thursday. We got one more day until the weekend. Yes, one more day. One more day. Okay. Hello, everybody. Keep on coming in and share with your friends. Share, share, share. We are excited about this show on today. Have some special people on on today. It's going to be awesome. We are, they're going to be sharing their journey. They're going to be sharing their story. I'm so, we're so excited to hear about it. So everybody joining in. All right, let's see. Get as many people in as you can. So, um, and we got our handsome, we got our handsome co-host. We gonna we gonna call Baby Boy the co-host on today. He's our co-host. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. All right. So, huh? What did you say? Talking up a storm right now. Talking up a storm. Yes. So. Thank you, everybody that is joining. Um, this is a special show. Um, as everybody knows, this month is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. It's Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And also, it is Pregnancy and Infant Loss Awareness Month. Um, and so, as you can see, um, the colors are pink and it's pink and blue. So, breast cancer is the color pink. And pregnancy and infant loss is pink and blue. So I tried to color coordinate a little bit, <laughs> tried to color coordinate just a little bit. Um, but we're going to go ahead and get started because everybody has, you know, lives. I don't want to keep everybody on here forever, but sometimes these shows get so good and I'm like, oh my gosh, I need to do a part two. Um, <laughs> but thank you everybody for joining. This is Candid Conversations with Coach D. I try to do these every other week and I just try to bring topics that, um, that are dear to my heart or that I just feel like people want to hear about. And sometimes I just want to put, I just want to support people in their story or their business or whatever it is that they're doing or give people information on things that sometimes we really don't get a lot of information on, or maybe we're scared to ask the questions and we want to know. So um, of course, this month is Breast Cancer Awareness Month and it's Pregnancy and Infant Loss Awareness Month. And so I was like, why not reach out to some people that I know that are beautiful and ask them to come on and share their story? And so I'm going to start and I'm going to let her introduce herself. Um, but this is Miss, uh, I'm going to let her introduce herself. But I met this beautiful woman about um, in 2017 or 2018. I competed in the Mrs. North Carolina International Pageant. And I met this beautiful lady, this beautiful queen. And she had an awesome story to share. I mean, just magnificent story. I mean, beautiful inside and out, um, a conqueror. She's victorious and it was just amazing to see her so beautiful and just to be so confident in herself and even just being on stage 
Um, and so we competed in a pageant together and I reached out to her because she has a story to share about her journey and her story um, of um, conquering breast cancer. So if you can, please unmute yourself and please introduce, introduce yourself. Thank you so much for the introduction that you gave me. You are precious. I had so much fun that weekend with you and it was such uh, an honor for you to reach out and ask me to come on your show to share a little bit about me. Um, so thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate that. I'm Phaedra Pistoni. I am a two-time breast cancer survivor. Um, I'm a wife of five years. I'm a fur baby mom to three sweet little dogs. Um, I'm a bridal boutique owner, college graduate, uh, philanthropist, volunteer. I love to give back. It just warms my heart to be able to do something for somebody else. It makes me so happy to do that. I love being a part of American Cancer Society's one thing that I've really been working with here lately, so excited for that opportunity with them. And also love Shirley's Angels um, here locally in Mooresville where I live. So I'm excited to be on here um, to kind of tell you a little bit about me. Um, my fight started back in 2016 when I was first diagnosed with breast cancer. I had a lumpectomy in January of 2017. And then um, I chose not to do chemo or radiation. That was just something I personally couldn't understand. Um, so I didn't do any of that. I did do like scans and stuff every six months and did my mammogram. Well, unfortunately in 2019, last year, my breast cancer came back. Um, talked to my husband about it, talked to doctors about it. And I knew this time I just had to be more aggressive, I had to do something different. Yes, I was super scared, um, but we chose to do a lump, uh, we chose to do a mastectomy. Um, so that was a bilateral mastectomy, taking everything off. And I was actually um, Mrs. North Carolina America at the time. Thank you. And getting ready to go to Mrs. America in August. So this happened in April. I had a double mastectomy in May and I was like, you know what? I am not letting her take this from me. Um, it's taken so much and I'm going to go and hope inspire other women to not give up on whatever comes your way, beating down your path um, to, you know, just do what you love, uh, regardless of the circumstance that you might be in. So I had that mastectomy I had tissue expanders, probably the first contestant ever to compete in a pageant with breast, uh, breast tissue expanders was not fun, wasn't easy, but you know what, I did it. Um, that final night walking across, walking across that stage and carrying our state flag of North Carolina, I was, that was what it was all about for me. It wasn't about winning. Um, it was that moment that I said to myself, I did it. Like I am here and ended up placing in the top six, which was, which was a huge honor out of all the amazing women that were there. Um, came home and was exhausted for a couple of weeks, but um, have just been blessed with the opportunities that um, have been given to me because of breast cancer. So, you know, for me, I uh, just turned that pain into a purpose yes. and shared the journey and, um, you know, try to turn that negative into a positive and hopefully inspire other women. So I'm yes. very thankful to you for letting me share a little bit about that um, tonight with others. So thank yes, you. Yes, most definitely. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And I definitely have some questions that I want to ask you. Yes. Um, but before we get back around to asking some more questions, I would like to give the Gibsons an opportunity just to introduce yourselves. Um, and um, I met this beautiful couple in ministry um, in Columbia, South Carolina. Um, they are a beautiful couple um, and they have a heart for God. Um, they have so many different things. They're authors, they, they design clothes, um, just so many different things. They're ministers, um, just so many different things. And so I wanna let, give them a chance to introduce their family. Well, he's yielding the floor to me. So, <laughs> so hello, everybody. We are the Gibsons. Um, I am Keisha, 
This is my husband, DK, and this is our little rainbow baby here, Sarag. Um, and we're, we're glad to be here this evening just to talk about our journey, um, a little bit about our journey and what we've been through in conception and conceiving and um, bringing forth the miracle that we have before us today in mm -hmm. um, that process and what it took us through and um, how it caused change and how it brought us closer together. Um, so as um, Coach D has said, um, I am an author. My husband is a clothing concierge. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he designs clothes. He has his own uh, clothing line. A website is out there now where you can get product and things of that awesome. nature. Um, and we're working on the future, the legacy of the family right here, Mr. Sarad stuff as well. Um, but we're both entrepreneurs. We love working in ministry, helping others and serving. So that's just a little bit about us. Yes, bit. amazing, amazing. Yes, yes, I'm so excited. So um, I want to go ahead and kind of, you know, ask some questions that, you know, that I had that I wanted to ask. And so I wanted to start with Miss um, Phaedra. Um, and again, I did not know you had a double mastectomy. Now, I know when we competed together, I know that, you know, you, you were a breast cancer survivor. Um, and then I remember last year, because I think I reached out to you and I was like, I'm praying for you, you know, and I seen that something was going on. And then I was like, oh, Oh my gosh you know you you had won the um the title that you won and then I was like oh my gosh now she's there and I was like that is just so amazing going through all that I know you had to have been worn out but the question one of the questions that I wanted to ask was um that going back and my question is how and when did you know that something was wrong like when was the first like you know I think you said in 2016 but or was it you felt something or you just went for the routine mammogram um you know now that I'm 40 years old yeah. you know I have to get those I have to get those every year actually the lady called me yesterday and was like okay we need to schedule and I was like okay yeah. call back closer to the time um and so my question to you is when did you first feel like something was wrong or when did you first get that indication like something's wrong or what happened? Um, thank you for that question because that's such a great question. And please go get your mammogram, um, do your self checks, ladies. Yes. Um, men, remind your ladies to do that too because that's how I found mine. It was very strange. Um, my husband was cooking dinner. He's the better cook. <laughs> So I was kind of sitting over at the table and I don't know, it was just something about me. I was like, something doesn't feel right. And I know it kind of sounds random, like you're sitting there filling yourself at your table, but I don't know. It was just something that was like, hey, you need to check this out. Like something doesn't feel right. And I told my husband, I was like, hey, something doesn't feel right. I feel this. He's like, oh, it's probably nothing. I'm like, you're right. It's probably not anything because we don't have a family history of breast cancer. So wow you know, we, we didn't think anything of it. I did have implants at the time. So I thought maybe it could be something with the implant. Right. But I went to the doctor. Um, mm -hmm. I wasn't of age to have a mammogram at the time that I did find it. And I went in thinking like, Oh, not a big deal. It was actually kind of scary because I did the, the process of a mammogram. They said, we need to go, we need to do an ultrasound. So I went straight from there to do an ultrasound. And I'm like laying there looking up by myself thinking, oh my God, what does this mean? Like, what's going on here? And then, you know, I kind of gathered myself and they were like, oh yeah, you know, we'll, we'll call you in a week and give you the results. And I'm like, okay, like, what does that mean? And so, you know, that, that long wait, that week of like, oh, it's fine. Don't worry about it. Just praying about it. And lo and behold, we went in the next week, my husband and myself, we sat down at a table with two other doctors and they throw this big binder of information in front of us. And I'm like, whoa. And they, you know, slowly start to talk about breast cancer and what it means. And then, you know, got to the point of like, well, you have breast cancer. And I'm like, what? And all I wanted to do was like scream, cry and run out of the room. Um, but I knew that's not what I needed to do at the moment. But thankfully, you know, I kind of looked over at my husband and he's kind of keeping it together and um, hearing everything. Because after you hear the words, you have breast cancer, you honestly don't hear anything else. So, you know, we just went home and cried about it, prayed about it, um, took the steps of, of talking to several doctors, 
chose the lumpectomy because we felt like that was the right thing for me to do at the time. Again, I just couldn't understand the radiation and chemo, which they recommended. But for me, I just, I, I didn't understand it. We were actually trying to have a child at that mm. time. So, you know, it kind of put all that on the back burner, like, okay, what if we do have a child, then we can't do all these other things with the treatment. So, you know, that was another thing that I chose not to do because of that. But, you know, I, I kept myself checks up um, a couple years, two and a half years later, you know, I'm doing my routine checks and I feel something again, went in again, not thinking anything, you guys. Um, and then a couple of days later is actually sooner this time because it was kind of crazy how within six months it had come back and grown. Um, so I'm, I'm thankful that I was doing those self checks and getting my mammogram and getting the scans and stuff. And it came back and, you know, we knew at that time, like we just had to be aggressive and right. that's what we did. And it is a struggle, but you know what, you can get through it one day at a time, never give up. God has a purpose and a plan for all of ours, for all of us. And um, I feel like mine is to share and hopefully inspire hope to other women that faces challenges such as breast cancer. Right. So here's my question. Um, because some know, and some may not, um, may not know the, you know, with the terminologies, please explain to everyone that's watching what a lump, lump, how do you say it? a lump? Lumpectomy. lumpectomy. I, couldn't, I couldn't get it either. <laughs> right. And then the mastectomy, right? Mm -hmm. Can you explain the difference for everyone? Yes. So a lumpectomy is where they go in and they basically just take that tumor out. Mine was a golf ball sized tumor that they ended up taking out. So they just go into the breast area, take that tumor out and then take some lymph nodes out in your arm area making sure everything is clear and safe. And I was done. Um, now, so with the, now with that, do they take tissue around that out? They do. They took a, a golf ball size uh, amount. Um, so the tumor was within the golf ball size and they just kind of cut around making sure the margins are clear, that they get everything, mm -hmm. um, hoping that you know everything's taken care of at that point. The weird thing for me coming back, um, the mastectomy, the cancer came back again in the same breast, almost the same spot. So, you know, I questioned myself, like, should I have done radiation? Should I have done chemo? But what if, you know? Um, so you, you have to be your own advocate and what you feel comfortable with. Yeah, the doctors tell you one thing and, you know, that is our guideline that we need to use, but you also have to make sure you're comfortable at the end of the day with it. And then um, the mastectomy is where they take all the breast tissue off. So I have no breast tissue left whatsoever. Um, so it's pretty much just a hollow, straight, um, nothing there. I did choose to have implants put back in. That's what the tissue expanders okay. help kind of create that space back in there. Um, so you could put the implants back in. So I had implants put back in in October once I came back from Mrs. America. I did have some complications with the implants. And I just had more surgery in August um, a couple months ago to have those implants taken out and new implants put in. Okay. So I'm feeling much better. Um, I finally went for a run today, which was so great because that just helps me clear my mind and kind of balances me. But um, that's the difference between the two. And then there's, you know, different stages, there's different treatments and stuff. Mm -hmm. My message is early detection is key. Ladies mm -hmm. get your mammogram because it can save your life like it has mine twice. Yes, I, I agree. <laughs> um, earlier you catch it, you know, I don't, I don't have breast cancer um, or I don't have any, I've never experienced, you know, personally, but my father has had um four cancers um so he's you know i definitely understand early detection definitely is um definitely is a key especially if you know i mean having to get your breast taken all the way off you know i'm sure that that is something like wow you know to really do it so you are definitely strong um thank you and so um, I want to I want to loop back around to the Gibsons. Um, and so the Gibsons, of course, everyone that's watching, they um, we're, they have experienced pregnancy and infant loss. And so I just want you to kind of tell us, you know, um, you know, the 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 story, the journey, you know, um, we were excited that we were pregnant or we had been trying. We were excited. And then something didn't seem right. You know, if you can take us through and just kind of give us, you know, 
you know, how, what happened to, to get you to understand like, okay, we lost the baby or, you know, just kind of tell us how you got there. Um, you go. You go. I'm going to yield the floor to you. <laughs> um, I can personally say that I think at 19, she was, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Okay. At 19, she was uh, told that she wasn't, wasn't able to get pregnant. And, uh, you know, that deals with uh, a lot on the psyche. And so having to come in because we got married at uh, a later time in our life, uh, being told that and her not being pregnant at the time, you know, that's, that's a lot as well when it comes to, you know, the factor of uh, stress with um, losing a child possibly. And so we, we've tried, we tried and tried and tried and, um, we actually yeah. did get pregnant yeah. and didn't know yeah. it. Thank you, man. Yeah. Thank you. It didn't know it. And um, I believe one day she went to the to the uh, restaurant with the bathroom and um, that's when she found out. It was, you know, dispersed in the toilet. And so that was a very hard time for for both of us, but more for her, you know, because of the things that was you know, stated years ago. And, and from that time up into, we got married, uh, how old were you? 39. 39, she was 39. So at 39 and, you know, this was a, a, a chance and it didn't happen. It really, uh, it really took a toll on her. And um, I had to be the, the, uh, the faith, uh, well, what you want to call it? The, um, the faith rock. The rock, the, the shield, the, the strong. I, I had to be everything in, in those instances because I still believed, I, you know, at the end of the day, these things do happen and we're going to keep trying and we're going to keep going. And to believe it or not, we actually went through three miscarriages. Wow. Oh, so, yeah. Um, so that really, <laughs> that really was, uh, that took, took a lot of toll, especially knowing, you know, we get words. You know, you're gonna have a, a child and things of that nature um, through ministry, and you look for it, and you get close. Uh, menstrual cycle doesn't um, come on for a while, so it's like, okay, let's go. Hey, everything's great, and next thing you know, exactly, all excited um, and hyped. And so for for years, for years after the fact, uh, I think it was five years to be honest with you, uh, within our marriage uh, that nothing happened and. Uh, got close, but uh, didn't meet the goal. And we went through every channel that we can think of, every channel we can think of, up until the point where we even started to change our diet. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and within changing our diet, we learned a lot of things uh, that uh, can help, can prevent or cause prevention of pregnancy. Okay, uh, share, definitely. So, so one of the things we learned um, is that the diet, when he said that I was told at the age of uh, 19, um, it was like 18, 19 years old that I would never be able to have children because I was diagnosed with a thing called endometriosis, mm -hmm. um, which is excessive tissue in the uterine area and in the um, reproductive area of a female's body. Um, and so after having been told that at that young age and going through all of these years of my life and getting to the age of 40 something and then finding out that, hey, you know, you can correct endometriosis by what you eat. And I'm like, wait a minute, what? Nobody told me this all of this time. <laughs> and so come to find out like a lot of the things that I love, I love eating bread. I'm a biscuit lover. I love, I bake cakes. I do all of these things. And they finally was like, you know, you need to cut out the bread, you need to cut out the dairy, you need to cut out all of these things because the excessive sugars, because the sugar feeds the endometrium and the endometriosis, which causes it to grow excessively, uh, which causes the extra menstrual cramps, the extra pain, the extra clotting, the bleeding, all of these different things have all these side effects from just what you eat. No, So I went to no red meat at all. Um, eating strictly fruits and vegetables at a point and literally going almost vegan um, to change my diet, which then caused me to lose a lot of weight, but then it actually built my systems up. And through that process, I was able to take from 
as a female from having a menstrual cycle that lasted sometimes seven to eight days long to going down to a cycle that lasted two days, two to three days, and sometimes maybe four. So there was a drastic change in my wow. body that saying. went through, that we went through um, by changing what we were eating. Um, it wasn't comfortable because I'm a mac and cheese. I was born in the country. My mama taught me how to cook greens and macaroni and cheese. You bake it in the oven. And I had to cut out all of the dairy and he loves cheese. So we had to find alternative routes on how to make some of the things that we still love to eat so that we could still enjoy ourselves, but still yet go through the process of what we needed to do to produce the end result that we ultimately knew we were promised. And that was right. our seed. Um, and so going through all of that process, like he said, having three miscarriages, um, seeing doctor after doctor, seeing doctor after doctor after doctor, and they keep looking at me saying, saying there's nothing wrong. There ain't nothing wrong with you. We don't understand what's going on. There's nothing wrong with your uterus. There's nothing wrong here. You're fine. There is no sign of endometriosis anymore. You're perfectly clear. We don't know what's going on to then it just began to play on my own psyche of saying, okay, it's just me. <laughs> you know, this isn't, maybe this isn't really what it's supposed to be. And so I battled with that at times. And uh, my husband had to be. Yeah, there were moments when I was just like, you know what, I quit. Don't ask me no more. Don't, I don't want to hear nobody talk to me about it no more. I'm done. And um, my husband had to be that sounding board for me. And he had to be that one that stood there and said, no, we're not giving up. No, you pull yourself up from out where you at and let's get back up on this horse and we're going to do this again. Right. And so you're okay. And you're not going to lose faith in the God that we serve because he's right. made it he's faithful to complete it. So I had to be reminded of those things at times when I wanted to give up and walk away. Um, right. Um, so here's my question to you. And then I want to ask Ms. Phaedra a question. Um, so here's my um, question to you. Um, you changed your diet. Did you begin to feel a difference in your body? And how long after you changed your diet, you know, did you see, okay, this is working. And then it worked that you were able to get pregnant. So I will say um, I was able to notice the change with eating and not only did I change my eating, but I incorporated um, yoga, I incorporated different exercises, um, I incorporated, um, you know, I started walking a little bit more, not just doing yoga or stretching and exercises, but walking, um, the food, I could tell the difference um, probably in about month two. I could tell with me changing my eating, I had more energy. I wasn't as sluggish. Yep, um, that happens. That's right. Eating the heavy stuff, the meats, all that stuff, it kind of weighs you down at a point. And, yes. you know, so I could tell that in almost about two months in that I could feel the change. And then people would look at me and be like, girl, you're losing weight. And then I noticed it with trying to put on clothes that my clothes were not getting too big and things of that nature. So, uh, we saw that change, but it actually took, it took about, a year. about a year before we were actually able to see the results of this little one here through conception. So um, there was so much that had to be, there was a lot of toxins. Um, that's what, what, what is um, the, the saying that the eyes are the windows to your soul. Like we really found that out through um, a, a doctor who deals in uh, what they call iridology, where mm -hmm. they see your eyes and your eyes have certain markers, uh, certain rings around it, things of that nature that tells the doctor what's going on in your body. So, mm -hmm. and so it sounds very gimmicky. I was like, okay. And the doctor literally within 15 minutes looked into her eye and he, he could tell that she didn't eat beef. He, he, he told her about her menstrual cycles and everything like he has no record on her wow. mm. and so he would um and basically those toxins come up through your eyes so yeah so when when you see a lot of different markers and things of that nature some people's eyes are actually not the, the right color because of the toxins the toxins yeah and so mm. the eating was was really dispelling a lot of the toxins that we had was in our body that's why i took a little longer. Took a while. Wow. Listen, everybody watching probably gonna go in the mirror. They probably some people right now probably like, 
Looking at their eyes. Right. <laughs> what color are my eyes? <laughs> Try to see what color their eyes are. Like, mm. um, but I wanted to ask you, Miss Phaedra, a question. Um, through your journey with breast cancer um, and different things, did you ever um, feel like you needed to change your diet? Did you change your diet? Did you change your eating habits, your exercise habits? Did you did your lifestyle change in any way as theirs did? Um, I did change my diet. I juiced a lot in the beginning. Um, I'm a runner, so I, I kept up my running. I love walking, being outside and stuff, but I did juice the first time. Um, and then after I had surgery, I did like a detox to kind of take all that out of my body for the most part. I have not done anything or I did not do anything the second time. I eat okay. Um, I'm okay eater. I try not to eat too much junk, but I do love some bread and pastries. <laughs> um, but I did change it a little bit. Uh, I think for me, mine was very um, stress driven as well. It was estrogen, progesterone. So I had to kind of balance my life better. Mm -hmm. um, so that was a big change for me because I'm a, I just worry about everything. I want to make sure everybody's taken care of regardless of I need or have what I need. Um, I would rather make sure somebody else right. And so I, I just had to stop and be like, hey girl, you need to take care of you right now because if you can't take care of you, you can't take care of anybody else. So just calm down, um, it'll be fine. And also like um, they were saying, Tom and I had just gotten married. We were only married a little over a year when I found out the first time. So it was just it was a lot going on. And, you know, as time went on, I learned how to stress manage everything that we had going on because it was so new. And, you know, how marriage is the first year, it's crazy. So, you know, that could have played a, a role in it as well. But yes, I did change a little bit of my diet, not as much as she did, but I did change a little bit. Wow, that's awesome. And it's just amazing that, you know, we we don't sometimes think about the lifestyle changes or think about these changes until something happens, right. you know, and we're like, oh my gosh, I really do have to make a change. But I do think that when we make those changes, it definitely changes our life for the long haul. And, you know, a lot of times when those lifestyle changes happen or when we do, it should be a lifestyle change. It shouldn't be something, well, I'm just going to do it for a little bit. Right. But sometimes those things begin to um, begin to stick. Um, and so here's something that was really dear to me that I wanted to ask you know, um, wanted to ask you, Keisha, and you, Phaedra, and then I'm going to ask you, DK, on the flip side. So um, as being, you know, a woman that went through breast cancer, um, being a survivor, and you, Keisha, losing a baby, one of the things, because I'm married, and one of the things that I wanted to know um, is how did you feel um, with your husband and him supporting you, because I think that that's a really huge part. Um, I know you, I know Miss Phaedra, you had your husband by your side supporting you. Um, and so I just, you know, Miss Keisha, if you can tell me and tell everybody that's watching, like, you know, how did that make you feel to know that even though it's happening to me, my husband feels it, he's going through this with me. And what did that do for you to know that you had somebody right there by your side? And what did, how did that make you look at him maybe even more different? Or what did you feel and experience with, you know, ha not having to go through it alone? You know, sometimes we may feel like that, but we really not going through it alone. Of course we have God, but with your husband and him supporting you. Um, I, I will have to say that, and he's, he's probably going to laugh when I say this, but um, there were times when he would, I would be at that place of just ready to give up and he would come in with all that positivity and I turn and look and look, I don't want to hear that today. I know all that. Can you just stop? And there was one point when I said, I don't want, um, I can't even think of the name. I says, I don't want the counselor. I don't want the minister. I want my husband right now. Can you just sit here and hold me and just be, I, I just don't want all of that. And he, like he says right now, he said they all the same person. <laughs> but there were just those moments when sometimes I just, you know, I wanted to sit there, but he never allowed me to literally just sit there at times. Um, but it was comforting when you look back at it, you're like, wow, I have this awesome man that didn't let my arms fall when I wanted to just pass out. 
-hmm. he was that rock that says, no, you're not passing out. I'm pushing you a little bit close. I'm pushing you a little bit further. You got a little bit more in you. You can go a little bit longer. You can go a little, you're stronger than this. Keep pushing. And so he was that motivator in my ear at times when I wanted to give up. And so it did make me look at him differently. It did give me, uh, aha, you know, I got the right one with me because some men would have been like, girl, get over it. Let's keep moving. You know, we ain't got time for all of this. And they wouldn't have cared. They wouldn't have taken that time to continue to motivate. So um, from the aspect of being a wife um, and having a husband that supports you, I say kudos. Um, love them, allow them that opportunity to be there, to be that rock for you, to be that stable, that, that force um, to be reckoned with for you so that, you know, in turn, at some point, you may have to be that for them, but allow them to shine and allow them to be that person that they were sent to be for you. Wow. That's awesome. That is, I know it, I bet it can be hard and sometimes you just want to give up, but that's, you know, with having your spouse there. And so that's why I wanted to ask, like, you know, how did that make you feel? Miss Phaedra, you know, how did it make you feel to know that you didn't have to go through it alone and that you had a husband to go through, through it with you and just the things, how it made you feel? I am so with Keisha as well. I mean, I can't imagine doing this by myself and I, it, I, I just, I can't. Um, he was the rock behind me. He was, you know, the one that pushed me and told me not to give up and, and show me that, Hey, you could be doing, you could be going through this type of treatment, but you're not, you're here, you're healthy. Um, you know, live life, get up out of your funk and let's, let's go do something fun. Um, you've been given a second chance at life. Um, use that, you know, you've got something inside of you that you need to share with other women, what you've went through. Um, it, you know, he applauded me a lot for getting up on that pageant stage and using that shiny microphone to share that message because looking at your body with scars on them and taking what God gave you away and being a pageant girl and wearing swimsuits and fancy dresses and stuff, it was hard. But you know what? I knew I needed to tell my story for somebody else, just like Keisha tonight. Like, I'm so thankful for her sharing her story because she feels, I feel like I'm not, hopefully I'm not over speaking for her, but I feel the same way with having my husband there and supporting me and the struggle, even though, you know, our, our roads are different with what we're dealing with at the moment, the struggle is real for both of us. It's very similar. Um, and, and thank God that we're here to share this. Hopefully anybody listening tonight can get something from us because it's a powerful message that I feel like we're sharing through you. Thank you for letting us share this um, with other people because people need to hear it. Um, you know, life's hard, it's challenging, but never give up. Keep your, your cheerleader beside of you. It's, if it's your husband, your mom, your sister, whoever it might be, because we need those people in our lives to let us know, yeah, you've had this circumstance or you've had this difficulty come about, but don't give up, live life. We only have this one shot, one chance, make a difference and love everybody. Yes, most definitely. Wow, amazing. Um, so DK, from the male's perspective, um, you know, what did it feel like to, you know, you're like, oh gosh, my wife has just lost our child. You know, you, you can't possibly feel the way she feels, but you do feel something because you're the father. Um, and what did it feel like to just, you know, you know, I gotta be here for her. I can't, we can't both be in a slump or we can't both be depressed or, you know, what were you thinking? Like, I, I gotta help her get through this. What, what was your role? How did you feel through the process? Um, I guess because, you know, some people, I, I, I'm different. I, for me, it was, we did, and it was a hurtful thing. We, we lost a child. Um, but I always, I'm, I'm very optimistic. I always see the, the bottle half full. And so I told her, I said, you do realize that you still have uh, menstrual cycles. So, you know, you still have the opportunity 
to to have a child and and for me my thing to motivate her was to get her in a space a space to really believe like um we can confuse the atmosphere we can confuse god at sometimes where you say you believe and then when something happens it doesn't happen in your timing or it doesn't happen your way you automatically switch off or it could be and, and, and again that doesn't take away from the trauma i don't want to take away from that but i needed to be that person that's going to push and say hey this is going to happen it's just a matter of when um it's not a matter of that if it's not going to happen it's going to happen and i know getting up there in age like wait a minute i don't i don't want to be at a certain age but at the end of the day it was already written and so uh <laughs> you know the story the future of this story, happen. you know it's already been written so this is what it was supposed to be and and so oh. i just wanted to keep positivity because in my mind it was no doubt there was no doubt about it there was no doubt about it and so um I just kept that that same process that same process like look you know even if i i had to approach it certain ways because like she said you know she would come to me like hey i don't want to hear all that um i just want my husband and and i had to realize like okay you know what i'm not going to come that way um maybe i have to approach it another way to show and to give her that the, the feeling of it's okay um take your time you know uh, get your head right and everything and 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 take the example that I'm giving to, to be able to bounce back. And for me, I believe, and I was telling her, I believe when it comes to God and, 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 and bringing a union together, everything has to coexist correctly. Everything has to match. And so she needed to be in the same space that I was in. And so you never know in the, in the process of intimacy, if a person's still in their head, like, I don't know that's a seed. And so what I was trying to get her to realize, like, look, we got this. We're winners, period, period. That's right. Winners, yeah. we are victorious. Exactly. Um, wow, that is that is so awesome. So let me ask you this question. Do you feel like, you know, when it happened, because you, you said you've had three miscarriages. Um, and so through those, you know, miscarriages, do you feel like at some point you're like, you know, I just don't want to do it anymore because, you know, some people may move on quicker than others. Um, I've heard stories where people are like, you know what, I'm done. I don't want to do it anymore. And it takes them years to even want to try again, or some people get through it quickly and they're like, okay, let's try again. You know, do, like, how did you feel like, okay, this is what God said. We are going to, it's going to, it's going to happen. Or was it like, Oh gosh, I'm drained. You know, some people get drained and they just don't want to do that anymore. The drain part. I was to keep on going, going uh, because I, I I'm going to keep going until I uh, exhaust all possibilities. If if I've exhausted all the possibilities, then it's just going to have to be one of the things that it, when it happens, it happens. But right. at the end of the day, you know, um, I was just the one that I guess I see it like this: it's it's an invisible finish line. Mm -hmm. And what if you was at the finish line and you said, you know what, I give up. And it was just one more step. One more step. And so that's how I, uh, how I saw everything. So I was like, you know, it could be one more step. It could be one more step. It could be one more step. And eventually it became one more step. So um, I just had to keep that going. And she was on the opposite end, but it was okay. <laughs> I kept saying, man, listen, I'm going to hit 45. What you... I'm 44. What, what are we doing here? But this one came at 45. So, you know, that was yeah. part of his plan. So I said, of course, awesome. you were real young. So you good. <laughs> yeah. Right. Exactly. 99. Sarah was 99. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Wow. Um, Miss Phaedra, so I wanted to ask you because, um, of course, you, you're you in the pageant, you're a pageant queen. Um, and so was it no doubt in your mind that you knew that you were going to get back up on that stage? Or did you have doubts like, I'm not doing this? I'm not doing it anymore. Um, what what went through your head? Like, oh my gosh, I love to do pageants. My pageant, my pageant life is over. Or you know what? Nope, this is gonna help me push even harder. Did you have those doubting moments? I, I did. And my husband told me he was like, 
go do it if you want to do it. And I'm like, but I don't feel pretty anymore. Like I have the scar. And then um, the second time I was like, you know what? I, I am doing it. It really helped me to turn that pain into a purpose and to really use that microphone to share with others. It, it gave me a platform that I felt comfortable sharing the message because again, I felt like I could help someone. Um, it was hard for me to get outside of that comfort zone to be okay with like, oh God, you know, like I'm, I'm not completely me like I was before, but I knew that I just had to be brave, be strong, um, do something that I love and not let cancer take that. And I just I felt like I was being robbed of that. And I just, I wasn't happy and it took a lot for me to be like, all right, you can do this, but you know what? I did it and I'm happy that I did it um, and I would do it again. Yes, yes, most definitely. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So question for the Gibsons, are there any more kids in the future? Yes, ma'am. Okay, <laughs> yes. Awesome. We are excited. Babies, babies, babies. Yes. More some. babies. And Miss um and Miss Phaedra, um, are you continuing to do pageants? What are you doing now? Great question. Um, you know, I just finally feel like I can breathe because I am not pulled down by breast cancer at the moment. So I am just taking it day by day. And I don't know if I'll do another pageant, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Um, Tom and I have all talked about having kids again. I feel like I'm at the age where I can't. So I don't know. We'll see. I'm kind of leaving it up to the man upstairs and, and, you know, just happy to be here to be alive and to continue on this journey that I have. Okay. So how old are you, Ms. Phaedra? I am not telling you that. I'm going to tell you, me at 45, boo, he can do it for you. So you're good to go. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. And I had my daughter at 35. I mean, that's not 40, but um, I had her at um, 35, you know, because what they say when she gets 35, oh, they're, you know, different, whatever. But I'm, I'm older than 35. <laughs> so thank you. But I do believe that, you know, um, if that's something that you and your husband decide to do, I think that would be amazing. And I think that you'll get exactly what you what you need. Um, and so you definitely are an inspiration. I'm sure you're definitely an inspiration to all the little pageant princesses that are out there and um, <laughs> young girls. Um, and so um, Miss Keisha um, and DK, so you said we have more kids in the future. What other things are you guys doing? Um, is there something that you do um, as far as pregnancy and infant loss? I know Ms. Phaedra is involved in different, you know, organizations and, you know, she goes out and speaks and different things. But as far as pregnancy and infant loss, um, I know you're an author. I don't know, you have you written in the book about it or are there organizations that you work with? Do Is there anything that you do in, um, that relates to pregnancy and infant loss or that you're looking to do? Um, so, yeah, there is a book coming soon. Um, about our journey um, to help women and um, to to be that, not just help women, but to also help their husbands, the men that have to play a part in that process with them as well. Um, so you'll hear um, some insight from my husband in the book as well. Um, but um, I do have that. I do get Facebook messages. I talk about it. Um, I have a blog on my page where I kind of reference it in some of my blogs and I talk about it. But I do have people that hit me up on social media platforms that say, hey, I have a young lady that needs to hear your story that is in, that is not feeling that she needs to be encouraged in the process. So definitely um, I am there as a sounding board if somebody wants to talk. I do connect with a lot of people in the natural um, end of things because of me changing my eating habits and my diet and so being able to educate people on that I work with a young lady named Nicole Brantley um, uh, they call her the womb therapist um, and that's because she does a lot with helping women understand the purpose and what's going in their womb and how to heal it naturally um, and get rid of cysts, fibroids, tumors, any of those things that might be hindering that process as well. Um, you can find her on Facebook as well. Um, and, and I've done, um, as he said, Dr. Um, 
uh, Lamar Price was the other doctor that we talked about with iridology. And um, I work with women across the board. Um, so I work at a women's center. I do a lot of volunteering at the Janie R. Jackson Women's Center that's locally here in Columbia, South Carolina. Um, it's connected to Bible Way Church of Atlas Road, but we support women and young girls um, there as well. So I do a lot of mentoring and talking to women there about circumstances and situations that they may be facing as well. So. Okay, awesome. Seems like everybody's doing some amazing things in the community and just, of course, giving back so that people can hear the story, hear the story um, of what's going on. You know, um, it's Breast Cancer Awareness Month. For those of you that may just be tuning in or if you're going back and watching this, um, I have these two, um, this beautiful couple and this beautiful woman here and it's Breast Cancer Awareness Month and it's Pregnancy and Infant Loss Awareness Month. And I just wanted them to come on and tell their story about in their journey about what they've been through so that it can inspire someone. I mean, Miss Phaedra is a pageant queen. She's a philanthropist. Um, she does things in the community um, and she's had she's had breast cancer twice. She's had a, has a, had a mis mastectomy. Um, and so, but she was still able to get up on that stage and she was still able to have confidence and she's just relying on, you know, or her, she's relying on God to just take it away and do whatever it is um, that she needs to do. And then we have the Gibsons who um, she, Miss Keisha has had three miscarriages and they tried. And at one point she gave up, she didn't want to do it anymore. And now they have their beautiful son, Sarad. Um, so it's just an amazing, amazing journey. And the one thing that I love, um, because, because, you know, this is candid conversations with coach D and this comes from parallel fitness, my business, parallel fitness, mental, physical, and spiritual. Um, and so they've talked about a myriad of these things. They've talked about the mental and where their mental state was and having to pull themselves back in and being able to just focus in and just getting themselves back in a space where they know that they could become victorious. Then physical, they had to do some physical changes. I mean, they had to eat different. And there were some actual, actual physical changes, even with having a mastectomy. Um, and then spiritual, they both have, you know, talked about that they believe in our father, our God. And so that's one of the things that I just love um, is that we are all Christians and we all believe in our father and our and the man upstairs to to guide us in this life. Um, and so that's one of the things that I really, really love that we know that we're intentional. We are intentional about understanding that we are here because of him and that everything that he does is for a purpose. Everything that he does, he's gonna get the glory. Everything that he does is because he wants it to happen. And we have a story to be able to tell somebody. We have a story so that somebody can hear the story and then that they can be, um, they can be you know, lifted up because I'm sure there's people that you guys have heard and you've been encouraged by people. I'm encouraged by both of you, both stories to just no matter what, you know, and I would just say to anybody out there that's watching, like sometimes you think your story is something, but there's some stories out there that can definitely top our stories. So um, before we get ready to close, I just want to give each one of you um, just a couple of minutes or a couple of seconds or however, just to tell us one thing that you would leave with the, with the viewers on how to get past circumstances, how to get past journeys, you know, just one, just give us some wisdom before, before we leave. Um, the Gibsons, if you'll go ahead. Oh, um, for, for me, I know I can't speak for everybody else, but for me, belief, uh, I, 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 I'm, I'm truly a believer of if you speak it, uh, we, we say a lot of things and sometimes we say things and just kind of pass it through because it's, a, it's another word, it's a phrase that we use every day, but truly, truly look up the word and follow it, use it as a lifestyle, really believe and, and take the proper um, and necessary steps in, uh, to achieve the goal that you're looking for. Um, that's the whole faith part. You believe and you do the work and you'll get the results. Now, I would say to anybody, you know, stop putting a time, stop putting a time clock or, or, or a time frame on, on when it's supposed to happen. Uh, because I know a lot of times we'll give up before, we'll give up before the uh, end result. You know, the, this is the full process because we don't know the time, it's the process that we're going through. And so I would say, 
get everything you need to get out of the process, and then there you go. You'll, you'll, you'll get the end result that you're looking for. Amazing. Get everything out of the process. The process is sometimes what we don't like to go through, yeah. um, but we need the process. Um, Ms. Keisha, give us um, a little wisdom that you would leave everybody with. Um, I, I was going to kind of piggyback on what my husband would say. Um, I broke down the word believe, just be and live. Um, so in, in believing, you have to walk that process out and to everything there is a process. So we can't just blink our eyes like we are I dream of genie and think that we're going to automatically have the end results there. There is still a process. Even in her blinking her eyes, there was a process in her getting that blink done. So we have to realize that no matter what we're going through or no matter what we're facing, there is a process and you have to walk through it. That's right. Process. I love that process. Um, Ms. Phaedra, can you leave the, um, the viewers with um, some words of wisdom before we get off? For me, I, I love the believe thing, you guys. Um, also, hope. I, you know, when I was lost, I always, you know, had hope that tomorrow's another day. Tomorrow's another day to make a difference. Um, and faith. Faith over fear is also something that I always speak about and just having the strength and knowing that you're not alone um, is, is huge. And also again, ladies, get your mammogram because it can save your life and give you choices and give you another day of hope and faith to continue to fight and be here and do the things that you love. Right. Yes, I would definitely say that for you ladies that are out there and they also tell men to do it as well. Um, you know, men don't often do it, but there are some men um, that have had breast cancer and that have breast cancer. Um, but women, um, especially, please, you know, check check your check your breasts, you know, during your time of your cycle or just any time you're in the shower or whatever. Um, check your breasts. Um, get your mammograms, please, please, please. If you're 40 or over, you definitely need to get your mammograms. Um, if you feel something's not right, get you go get checked. Um, you just never know. Um, and so that's what I would say. And so I just want to tell each one of you, thank you so much for um, coming on and being on Candid Conversations with Coach D. You've definitely blessed me um, on tonight. You've blessed me with your presence. You're both um, the Gibsons and Miss Phaedra. You're beautiful, beautiful, beautiful people um, inside and out. And I'm just glad to have you in my circle and to have you in my space and to know you. Um, and so thank you for um, accepting the invitation to come and to share your story, to be able to encourage others, to be able to lift others up. And so thank you to all the viewers who are watching. Thank you for taking time to watch with us. Share this. Um, because somebody needs to hear stories. Somebody needs to be encouraged because they may be going through something and they think that theirs is, you know, you know, maybe, um, gosh, man, I have a headache. And they're really like, oh my God, I can't believe I had a, have a headache. Well, here's a story of, two, of um, someone who's had three miscarriages, a couple who's had three miscarriages and a woman who's had two breast cancers. Um, and they're here, they are live and they are happy. And that is encouragement. And so thank you to all the viewers for watching Candid Conversations with Coach D. So listen, I want to give y'all a sneak peek. On October 29th, you might want to tune in. I'm going to have a panel of about five males that are going to be talking to us about mental health amongst men, okay? It is going to be an amazing show. It's going to be an amazing show. They're, the men are going to speak out about mental health, okay? This, this is going to be an awesome show. We're going to have a panelist um, of men um, on the panel. So make sure you check back October 29th for that at 7.30. But until then, Thank you all the viewers for watching. This has been Candid Conversations with Coach D. And remember what I always say, it's not just a workout, but it is your life, okay? So take that with you. And we appreciate everyone for coming on and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.